Hello everyone and welcome back to Dragalia Foundry, a fan channel where everything Dragalia Lost can be found. This video is going to contain my thoughts on this month in Dragalia Lost for the month of February 2022. In case you're not aware, this is where the game's director, Okada, talks about what's to come for the month ahead and often teases things about the future of the game as a whole. So in this video, I'm basically going to provide my reaction to and impressions on the This Month in Dragalia Lost News post. We'll read about what's coming up in February. I'll share what I'm most excited about, what some of my expectations and predictions are when relevant, and then we'll pretty much call it a day. I always like these videos as an opportunity to check in on the game and share how I'm generally feeling as of late with Dragalia Lost as well. So there'll be a little bit of that sprinkled in too. And hopefully this will be a pretty relaxing, pretty laid back video just looking at what's going to happen this month. January went by pretty quickly on my end. It's crazy to think another month has passed and we're into 2022. I feel like time has either moved very slowly or very quickly depending on the circumstances since, uh, since about spring of 2020 or so. So yeah, here we are in February 2022. We're almost uh, almost at that half anniversary. It doesn't feel too far off now when we talk about February. We've almost made it through the limited period where there's tons of seasonal adventures as well, coming off of Dragon Yule, then New Year, and now into Valentine's. So we've almost made it. But as you may have seen, if you already saw what's coming in the This Month post, well, there are some permanent adventures, setting aside those seasonal adventures, there are some permanent adventures who are very, very exciting being added to the game this month. So let's go ahead and head into the news post. And of course, just as a reminder, your shop counts and exchange limits have been reset with it being the start of a new month. That's gonna include your Alberian Battle Royale, Void Battles, Astral Raids, and uh, now it's also gonna include Enter the Kaleidoscape as well. So. You can get your nice Omnicide and Sunlight Stones for the month. If you haven't collected those already, you can start grinding up for them as well. So some good free rewards available on the first of a new month as always. But here we are in this month in Dragalia Lost. And of course, Director Okada, he's got to thank us for playing Dragalia Lost. It's just how it goes every single time. He's never failed at that. And he's once again excited to bring us the latest news on what's happening in and around the game this month. Okay, so first up, there's an invasion event happening right now. The Blood That Binds. This dropped yesterday at the time of recording. And I played through the story yesterday, have played through all the content for this event so far. We'll probably post a separate video on that once all of the content is released because it's being doled out in a staggered fashion. But I have to say, I did enjoy this one. This was a good one in my eyes. There were a few small copy editing issues, some typos here or there. The localization seemed a little different than normal, but the characters still came across as their well-developed selves. All of the characters in the royal family have now had some time to really cultivate who they are and showcase that. I think that really made this for a fun event. So uh, yeah, I like this one. We also had a replica of Alberius as our primary enemy, which allowed us to have a pretty fun boss fight or trial against Alberius too, and created some fun story moments where, you know, Alberius being a multiple pact holder got to battle against Yudin, who was a multiple pact holder. We didn't have any type of retcon. We actually had Zethia using her full powers with Bahamut, so I was happy to see that. A lot of characters appearing in their gala regalia. Well, mostly Emil and Yudin in particular. But still, this was a fun one. I enjoyed this one. And uh, Valix, I felt, got some of the best character development of all. With Ferris also having some good moments to shine too. And just getting to see the dynamic between the royal siblings who have been core to the game since the beginning as the antagonist is very, very enjoyable for me. There was a chart posted before the game's release about the relationships between the various scions of the Alburian royal family, and uh, some of those we never really saw come to fruition. Like, I think one of them was between Leonidas and Ferris that said something like maybe bitter rivals or, you know, rivals for the throne. 
And we've never gotten that dynamic at all up till now. And so I'm curious now that Ferris has been released from the control of the progenitor, will we get more of him? And it certainly seems that way based on this event. And it was also nice how this just tied into what's happening in the main plot directly. So yeah, I probably covered a lot of what I'll say in my separate video about the blood that binds just now, but uh, this was a good one in my opinion. Hopefully you enjoyed it too. Of course here, Director Okada talks a lot about what's happening in this event. And if you're wondering why he's making an appearance now, well, yeah, that is tied to the main campaign. So continuing on here, I hope that someday Baron and his siblings will be able to reconcile their differences. That's a nod, definitely a nod to the future. The story began with the seven science splintered, but since then we've seen everything from cooperation to competition as they followed their own paths grew more confident in both themselves and each other, and remade the very world as they know it with their actions. In this new spirit of camaraderie, I hope Baron and his siblings will be able to reconcile their differences someday. Yeah, that's gotta be a nod to the future. I was a little surprised Nedrick wasn't more prominent because he is one of the most powerful, if not the most powerful of the siblings, technically speaking. Maybe Ferris is up there too with some of what he's done. Baron probably up there as well. But uh, it would seem that being able to access Bahamut's power should probably have been enough to deal with uh, Replica Valvirius, at least in my mind, if you're talking about one of the creators of the world. So between Nedric and Zethia, I would think that would probably be able to handle things, but uh, it took everybody, it took the whole team, and that was for the purpose of bringing everybody together in that shared goal. So I think it was fine how it worked out. And speaking of reconciling differences, Here's a mention of Gala Emile. So Gala Emile showcase is up right now. I posted my review about that a couple days ago. Since Gala Emile's release, you've already seen videos of Gala Emile doing crazy damage and being really strong. So I think my expectations have probably been exceeded relative to where I was. I thought he was a good adventurer and going to be quite strong with the ability to use any two shared skills. Probably a little bit even better than what I expected. I still don't really feel like I have the resources to spend on him though and summon for him, and I did spend a lot of Diamantium just on the New Year's, so not gonna plan on summoning for Gala Emile. I did dip my toe into the daily deals just to give myself a shot, but so far no dice on Gala Emile on my end. Strong adventurer though, and a good addition to your water roster if you do happen to summon him. All right, so reading on, Plans for this month. So this is where we get into the new stuff. The adventurers Valix and Ferris and the dragon Michael will appear in a prize showcase starting on February 4th. Wow. So this shocked me to see. Uh, Michael will be the fifth and final of the five archangels made available from the summit showcases. But, and we've known he's been coming since the, since the anniversary last September. But Valix and Ferris playable and all of them on the same prize showcase, this is really a stunner to me. And so I see this as a very positive development. I think it's fantastic that you can summon for all three of them on one showcase altogether. Now granted, Kayla Emile is on a separate showcase, so they have spread out the goodies a little bit here. But this is just not something I would have ever seen coming. I think these are popular enough characters that they could easily be the selling point for future Gala banners without them having a permanent pool variation. And to be clear, that's what this appears to be because prize showcases, they're normally not, you know, they don't normally contain Gala adventures or limited adventure or seasonal ones. They're usually permanent adventures. So I expect them to stick around in the future and be summonable in the future. And it's kind of a shock to me that they're just gonna be so accessible compared to all the other royal siblings having only appeared really in their gala incarnations and i guess in some cases they also got seasonal alts later on like with summer leonidas or summer chell so there is that precedent to it but still uh it surprised me i don't know if this means we're never going to get gala valix or gala fairies or at least not in the foreseeable future we're not going to get them but uh, nevertheless i was not prepared for this at all as far as my resources so sad to say, but I think I'm probably gonna end up skipping Emil and Valix and uh, and Ferris here. This is the time that I 
I wish I had the luxury of just wailing on all of these because I really do want them in the collection. I mean, how sweet would it be to have all the royal siblings, or almost all of them, we'll exclude Baron and Nedric here, but almost all of them in your collection. That'd be very, very cool uh, relative to where we were when we started the game, but I just don't think I'm in that position to be able to do so. Hopefully some of y'all out there have been saving up and can summon on this showcase, not to mention Michael. I mean, Michael might be a good dragon in his own right, uh, exciting dragon to pair with Basilius. I don't expect him to break the game or anything because we have had very powerful wind dragons uh, recently in Fudo Mio O and Gala Beast Volk. So not expecting a whole lot there, but with Valix and Ferris, I do think that there's likely to be some design space that's pushed, some power level that's pushed to where these are impactful characters on their debut. And uh, yeah, just, I'm at a loss for words. I mean, I really didn't see them coming. So it's a pleasant surprise. There was a moment in the story of the event where this portrait of Valak showed up, but my thought was, oh, I wonder if that's like his gala outfit that they're, they're planting the seeds here. But apparently that's just gonna be his adventure portrait in all likelihood. So yeah, Valix and Ferris being added to the game as playable adventures, gonna be a highlight this month, even if I'm not in a position to summon for them. And as we read on here, next up we find out about more Trials of the Mighty, so this time around we're gonna get Flame and Light Attuned versions of Surtur as raid bosses. If you clear these quests, you get materials for unlocking the mana spirals of Gala Cerise or Gala Zena from the daily bonuses. So I'm happy about that, I'm also kinda happy just that for Trials of the Mighty, this should be the last iteration where we're getting redone bosses in the form of these uh, Sinister Dominion bosses. So I'm happy to see that too, like we finally completed the cycle here with Surtur. But moreover, Cerise really needs the upgrade, and honestly Zayna probably can use it too. So super happy to see them get it, obviously Cerise, a character after my own heart, who I went after with my own wallet that uh, finally I was able to add to my collection after much summoning and much suffering. So I will be using an Omnicide on her as soon as I get one from the Kaleidoscape this month and uh, looking forward to trying her out. Throwing her onto my flame team, you know, maybe benching Summer Alex for a while. Uh, her kit has already been revealed and it looked pretty good to me. So I'm, uh, I'm very much looking forward to getting to play with her again because she has not seen a whole lot of use from me for a long time, unfortunately. So yeah, we have our showcase, we have the Trials of the Mighty, and then next up, right on Valentine's Day, the Romance Under Siege Onslaught event is returning. There's no mention of any kind of associated summon showcase pertinent to this event, but we do find out about our mid-February showcase below. So this event itself, I don't have super strong recollections of, but I do hope that Valentine's Chelsea is made summonable as are uh, some of our past Valentine's characters who I think are still limited. I, I think Addis and Melody are still limited even though Hildegard, Ezalith, and Orion were made permanent. So if I'm not mistaken, there's still three limited Valentine's adventures. That's kind of a weird holiday in that some are permanent and some are limited. Most of the other holidays, it's either all one way or another. So hopefully they'll become available on the Remix Showcase we're likely to get mid-month. And in addition, a new adventure will make their debut in a Summon Showcase in mid-February. They have appeared in-game before, but never as a potential addition to your roster until now. I hope you're excited to see what they can bring to your team. So that's quite the teaser there. Uh, my initial reaction, my gut reaction was Nina, the shopkeeper, so that is where my head went first. But I will say there are lots of characters in the adventure stories, in the various events that have taken place, that this could also be. There's even characters who have been seen on Wormprits that aren't in any story that we just have the artwork of and maybe it could be them too. But Nina is who I'm hoping for the most. But you know, this could technically just be another Ayito adventure, like a Yahan de Toha, and that would also be quite exciting, coming off a showcase with royal siblings into an Agito adventure showcase. That could be something in of itself. But uh, I think that more likely, I don't know, 
Well, I actually don't know. It could be. It could go either way, honestly. I do think that we'll probably see Atlas, our final dragon in the line of brothers of Menoetius and Prometheus and Epimetheus. Atlas is the final sibling. I do think we'll see Atlas as a permanent dragon as part of this. But, uh, you know, is it going to be a playable Agito? Is it going to be Nina? Is it going to be, uh, let's say, what was it from, from the Abyssians? Was it Tiana? I think her name was. Someone like her. You know, is this kind of more of a Lathna situation where she was just an NPC at one point and then she became playable and now even has an alt and is a super popular character? So I'm excited about this one, but I don't really have any great guesses just besides who I mentioned. Okay, so next up, we're getting our usual main campaign update, part one of chapter 24 this time around, being added on February 17th. Our heroes will embark on a journey to the homeland of Gatov and Sheila to learn more about their past. Now, if past is precedent, then this month we're probably going to get a Gala Dragon instead of a Gala Adventure. Likely just another of the Gala Agito would be my bet. But next month in March, when we get the second half of chapter 24, that's probably when we're gonna get our next Gala adventure. And you know, it could be Sheila, if that's a character we're gonna see developed through the plot here. There are some others I think it might be, especially as we head toward the half anniversary. I feel like Nedric might be a good fill-in for that as just a prominent character uh, to fill that slot. But uh, Sheila seems as good a candidate as any. Um, oh, hmm, this just gave me an idea. So thinking about Sheila and Gatav reminded me about Grams. Maybe this character that hasn't been summonable yet could be Origa. Even though she's, I guess, did she die? I, I can't remember what happened to her. That's, oh no, I feel so bad. But she had that touching moment with Basilius. But what happened to her after that Faith Forsaken raid part two? Did she, I feel like she had that moment with Regina and then she was gone, right? Or she's still around. Well, either way, I think they could make her an adventure. That would be an interesting choice, especially if she shapeshifted into Satan as her unique transformation. Okay, so after the story update, Legend Difficulty for Iblis's Surging Cascade is coming at the end of the month. I actually got the order off on these. I thought that uh, Primal Brunhilde was coming sooner, but it looks like Iblis is coming before then. And so with this one, you're going to start with your light element adventures and then in the second phase use your wind element adventures. So for the second phase at least you'll be able to use your primal dragon weapons. Then we have some uh, extra dragon and binds announced for Apollo, Pazuzu, Epimetheus, Styx, and Corsaint Phoenix. Apollo, Pazuzu, Corsaint Phoenix, and Epimetheus all have punishers. Maybe they'll give them gen 2 punishers on top of their gen 1 punishers. So what I mean by that is Apollo currently has Burning Punisher. Maybe they'll also throw on Scorch Ren Punisher. And likewise with Pazuzu having Poison Punisher, maybe they throw on Stormlash Punisher with Core Saint. She has Paralysis Punisher. They could give her Flash Burn. And Epimetheus has Poison right now and they could add Shadow Blight. That would be pretty solid if I do say so myself. And for Styx, Styx is just the dragon here that needs the most help. I think the biggest thing would be if they could really reduce the time it takes for Styx's buffs to accumulate, that could be a game changer. But uh, Styx is just right now still a very tragic dragon. So good to see Styx getting an upgrade for sure. And now we come to future updates. So only a couple of these this time around, but uh, one of them is very cute. As announced in a previous episode of Dragalia Digest, the adventure Housekeeper Pia will appear in an event in late February. Another adventure in a new outfit will make their debut alongside her, so I hope you're looking forward to learning more once the event notification is posted. I am looking forward to learning more. Uh, Pia just looks so adorable here, and uh, I don't know if they'll maybe pair her with another child character and just go for the cuteness factor on this event, or maybe not. I mean, it, there's so many children that are adorable, like they could pair her with another Loan alt and it would be uh, super adorable. Or they could bring back baby Luis from Elementary Escapades, perhaps, and finally make her playable. But uh, whatever the case may be, with the Housekeeper title, uh, it also makes me think of like Cleo and the cleaning events we've had, a sweeping retrospective. So perhaps, uh, perhaps that'll be part of the storyline, and maybe it'll be another Cleo alt, who knows? 
Okay, so then finally, Primal Brunhilde's Trial will join the slate of high difficulty content available for players to challenge in late March. So this is about a month later than I thought it was going to happen. I think I just got my dates confused on that in the past. Like Primal Midgard Stormer's Trial, this quest will feature a boss who transforms from their humanoid form into their primal form mid-battle. And uh, yeah, that's it. So Primal Brunhilde's Trial is one I'm probably most excited about from the updates this month. I'm excited about the adventures that are coming out too, but I can't get my hopes up too much just because of my lack of summoning resources at the moment, so that uh, stymies my excitement a little bit. Finally, in conclusion, we're getting some rupees and some summon vouchers for this month, and then an announcement that of course, our next update is going to be on March 1st. So definitely let me know what you thought about this month in Dragalia Lost for February 2022 in the comments below. I'd be curious to hear, especially what your summoning plans are. You know, are you going to try save for potentially a Nina or another alt of a character we've seen before? Will we even get seasonal Valentine's Day characters this year? Is Pia going to be seasonal, perhaps? I'm curious about your thoughts on that as well. But that is pretty much going to do it for today, everyone. So thank you as always for watching. Take care, and I'll see you next time.